Hey everyone, Muckluck here, and most of my normal audience is thinking, What? What the f Because yes, I play Raid Shadow Legends. No, this isn't sponsored. I've been a free-to-play player for about two years now. Recently, I have had major success with the most tactically challenging fight in the game, and I wanted to make a guide for it, so here we are. Let's see if I can make your head spin. Here's a screenshot from last week when I killed the boss that I'm about to show you. I reached turn 248 of the boss's turns, or turn 1026 of the total turns, did 74 million damage. The fight was over an hour long, but it was uh, very engaging, and I was having a blast doing it. So, first off, no, you don't require all of these heroes. The most common complaint in raid comment sections is, oh great, I just have to get these four heroes that I don't have for this. There are like 581 champions in raid, last I checked, and we have all got different one. So I will offer you alternative options for all of these as well as the reasons that I took them so you can go, oh, well, I can't, I don't have that, but I have this other person that can do this. Hopefully. First champion I used, Duchess Lilitu. Couple of reasons. One, she's got an AoE rebirth. Uh, she can revive the whole team if they, if anybody goes down. It's just an insurance policy. I did multiple runs without her. This team still worked. This just made me a little more comfortable in something, in case something crazy happens. Her passive reduces the damage the team takes from bosses, which makes not having decreased attack on the team become not that big of a deal. Uh, Shroud of Souls puts Veil on the team, so does Spectral Rebirth if she revives somebody, but the Veil makes it to where you can attack the Head of Torment without getting feared by it. And if you don't have Inquisitor Shemael, this is kind of a big deal. Uh, I do not have him. If you do have him, then setting this team up is a whole lot easier. She is built entirely for survivability. Went for high amounts of health, high amounts of defense. She also has high resist because I use her in the arena, but that is not required for this. Uh, just health, defense, and I, I went for over 200 speed. Masteries, here are the masteries. Pause if you need them. Replacements. If you don't have Duchess, what can you bring? My favorite replacement for Duchess, which, uh, you know, she's a void, so you might not have her, but, you know, some some people will, is Ursula the Mourner. Uh, she's still got an AoE revive. She also has AoE decrease attack, so you don't feel like you lost Duchess's passive with this. Also, a uh, higher uptime on increase attack on your team. Uh, she does not provide Veil, though. If you have Shemael, she's perfect. If you don't have Shemael, you're still going to need Veil from somewhere else uh, to block those pesky fears. Or a cleanser. Um, my cleanser for this team is Doom Priest. I'll be talking about her shortly though. Another option for this slot is Rector Drath. Rector Drath does uh, Spirit Form, which is a revive for your teammates. Uh, it is not an AoE revive, it's one at a time, but people don't die that often on this team if you gear it the way I did. She also can put Veil on your team. So again, uh, this reduces how often you might get feared by the Head of Torment. Now, I like to put her in a reflex set. Something a lot of people I've talked to don't know is that if you have a reflex set, which what it does is every time you take a turn, there is a 40% chance to randomly reduce a skill cooldown. It appears that there is something in the game that makes it always proc at least once per three turns. So if you've got a four turn cooldown and you don't use any other skill, so the only skill on cooldown is a four turn cooldown, it will always at minimum seem to go to a three turn cooldown. Sometimes a two, if, if it procs out, you know, two turns in a row. So, so basically by having the reflex set, this veil goes from a 50% uptime to a 66%, sometimes 100% uptime. Um, less so when it is on champions that have, you know, taken extra turn. Uh, for example, uh, not that you would bring him into this team, but if you had Seeker, you know, Seeker has an ability that grants him an extra turn. And if you use that, uh, you know, his, his buffs fall off more quickly. Something to keep in mind. Second slot on the team is Geomancer. Uh, Geomancer has a passive that reduces the damage him and his teammates take, uh, as well as reflecting some of that damage back to an enemy that he has set on fire. Now, for some heroes, these passives, they need to be ahead of the other people in the queue. So it is important when you are going to fight against the Hydra that you have got everybody in the correct order. Uh, for example, here I've got Duchess in the first slot and I have uh, Geomancer in the second slot. So that means that when we get get hit, she gets hit, her passive triggers, then he gets hit, his passive triggers, and that helps keep the other teammates alive. Make sure you've got your people in the right order if they've got helpful passives like that. It does matter. Now Geomancer, again, we have him in a reflex set. The main thing we care about with him is using this as often as possible. This sets an enemy on fire, and while they're on fire, any damage your team takes gets a portion of that gets bounced back to the burning target. I have had moments where I have had Geo with lucky reflex procs 
have all four enemy Hydra heads on fire, and it was glorious. So don't underestimate Reflex Set on this guy. Um, Creeping Petrify, we really only use uh, under certain circumstances. Uh, I'll come back to that. Um, as far as total stats, this is what I am running right now. Uh, it's mainly you need accuracy to land the burns. Other than that, just survivability. Just, you don't want him to die. Masteries, this is what I'm running. Screenshot that if you need it. Replacements. If you don't have Geo, you got a couple things to think about. One, HP burn is incredibly strong on the Hydra. Every person that's on fire is burning all their teammates. Now, Geo is good for a couple reasons. One is the Poison Hydra, when he puts the smoke cloud on everybody, prevents the application of any debuffs that require hitting it. Quicksand Grasp sets an enemy on fire without hitting it, so you can set them on fire. And the Poison Smog is ignored if they're on fire, meaning everyone else can hit it. Now, there's a couple ways of combating the Poison Cloud, and that is by putting block buffs on them so they can't get the cloud in the first place. But if they get the cloud, you need to set them on fire in a way that does not require a hit. Geomancer's Quicksand Grasp works for this. Drexthar, which you can get from 100 Days in Tag Team Arena. His passive, when he's hit, not when he is attacking, but when he is hit by a Hydra, the Hydra can set itself on fire, even if they've got the Poison Cloud. Teumessia, uh, honestly, if you don't have the other two, you probably don't have Teyu, but this is worth a mention. For some reason, when she hits the Hydra heads, even if they all have the cloud, she'll still set them all on fire. I, I have no idea why, because it, it, it doesn't place the burn. Um, it, it just does it with a hit, but for some reason, it works. Um, additionally, a more common option would be Mordecai. Uh, Heavenly Flames sets enemies on fire and puts increased attack on your teammates for three turns. Only downside to this is it is a four turn cooldown. Now, time's undoing, you can't mess with the turn meters of the Hydra. If I were to use Mordecai, I would put him in a reflex set so that he could do this every three turns minimum, sometimes two turns, and just not use time undoing so the reflex would always proc on Heavenly Flames. Now, if you have someone on the team with block buffs, which prevents the Hydras from getting the poison cloud in the first place, you can use an HP burner that doesn't place the burn, meaning they do a hit that does the burn. For example, Tyrant Ixlamore, when he does a burn, it hits all enemies, so it could not apply it if the poison cloud was active but it does burn all the Hydras at once, so he ends up doing a lot of damage on the fight. Uh, Sissio is very powerful there because she can set everyone on fire and then also trigger the burning as if a turn had passed, kind of give, giving you the advantage of time there. I don't have her, so unfortunately I haven't gotten to try her, but I know she trucks. Third slot on the team is where I would put Inquisitor Shamail. Now, Inquisitor Shamail uh, has a passive where if anyone on your team were to be feared, they instead are not, and then he shoots the boss in the face. So, you know, it, very popular having him on Hydra teams. Most Hydra teams have him. I don't have him. I had to find another way. I am currently using Doom Priest. Doom Priest, these are the stats I'm running. A uh, lot of health, defense, over 200 speed. Um, really nothing else matters here. She's, she's not bringing a lot else to the table. As you can see in the screenshot here, she did a little bit of healing with her passive. Uh, she did a tiny bit of damage but that's really just not her job here. So here's the gear I have her in. I just showed the total stats. Here are her masteries. War Master adds a tiny bit of damage. If you are bringing a one of the revivers I mentioned earlier, such as Duchess or Ursala that do increased attack, make sure that she doesn't do increased attack on the exact same turn that they do, or else it would just be a waste of her turn. It wouldn't do anything. Now, the only other hero in the game that has the same effect as Doom Priest that I know of is Tuhana Rock. Now, Tuhana Rock, um, statistically, is rarer than Doom Priest, so, uh, but there's someone out there that has two Hana Rock and doesn't have Doom Priest or Shamail. If that's you, then this information might help you. She can also handle the cleansing, allowing you to hit the Torment Head, you get feared by it, and then she cleanses it as long as she goes before your next turn. If you are bringing a cleanser like that, make sure that at least by some small amount, they are the fastest on the team, uh, even if it's just one speed more than the others, so that they go before them uh, to get those debuffs off. The next champ I brought was Obero. Her job is to make the Head of Mischief not annoying. Now, the reason for that is the Head of Mischief always attacks the person that has got the most buffs. She has a skill called Ninja Arts, where she gives herself uh, increased crit rate buff, increased crit damage buff, and then she hits an enemy, and if the attack is a critical, then she gets perfect veil buff, and then she has a passive where when she gets veil, she gets a revive on death buff. So she gets four buffs, okay? So if she, uh, your team, um, like, let, let's say you've got Mashald on your team. Mashald gives your whole team uh, increased crit rate, increased crit damage. Well, she still has perfect veil and revive on death, 
That's two more buffs than everyone else has. And that's what's important, that she has more buffs than the other people have. This uh, can be done with other heroes. Any other hero, um, it, just because I'm looking at him, uh, Skull Lord Vergal. Skull Lord Vergal gives himself strengthen constantly. So if no one on your team provides strengthen to the team, and then you've got him giving himself strengthen, he ends up with more buffs than what the others have, and he would be your mischief tank. Now, the mischief tank, you want that one person to have high resist. Now, my clan is currently fighting uh, the hard Hydra head. Um, so I went for over 400 resist. I ended up around like, uh, what was the total here? 478. Uh, again, speed in the 200s around everybody else. Um, aside from that, we also had to have 100% crit rate on her because she only gets the veil and the revive on death buff which again, number of buffs matters if she crits. Uh, that also means don't have her hit a weak affinity with her A3. You want to also not hit a poison smog uh, Hydra, because that would just be a complete waste. Make sure she, even if it's not the head you want to kill, make sure she uses that skill on one where it'll be a crit, then do whatever else after. Uh, yeah, resistance, 100% crit rate, and then the speed, and then whatever. You could go glass cannon after that, or just, you know, health and damage after that. If she occasionally dies, it's not even a big deal, because she gives herself revive on death constantly. Outside of that, I didn't use any particular set bonuses. I used uh, Hell Hades artifact uh, program, just to find the gear that gave her the best stat and then I just plug that gear in. So there is some set bonuses here, but I, it, I didn't really care. Uh, these are the mastery she's running if you want to screenshot. Um, I was not too afraid to give her deterrence. Now deterrence is whenever someone on your team gets feared, uh, there's a chance that you're gonna counterattack. Unfortunately, if you don't have Shamail, what happens is let's say the head of Torment hits Doom Priest and fears her, Mashald has deterrence, Mashald hits the head, then Mashald gets feared because he hit the, fe the fear head and then it just it's a chain reaction of bad stuff. If you don't have Shamail, only use deterrence on champs that are gonna be like permanently perfect veiled. Uh, for example, Obero or Yannicka. Uh, both of them veil themselves constantly and they can run deterrence and get free hits in and it's fine. Now again, if you don't have Obero, find another champion on your team that can constantly have at least one more buff than the others and give them high enough resistance. A quick tip on this topic, if you've got someone with a blood shield ring that is uh, good for their race, I don't have one for my Shadowkin, so Obero doesn't have one, uh, you can get shields when you attack. So that is another source of another buff if you want to force uh, one extra buff on someone of your choosing if you happen to have any of these. Uh, those come from clan, clan versus clan. Next champion I ended up bringing was Mishald. Now again, we're talking about a legendary, which means a lot of you are not gonna have this. But let me tell you about why I brought him and then you might find somebody else that fits the bill. Now Mishald does a few things. One, uh, he puts leech on all enemies. This allows us to be kind of greedy and not run a healer. The leech ends up fully healing our team constantly. Whenever you hit someone with a leech, you uh, do a ton of life stealing on the attack. He also puts increased speed and crit damage on all allies. The increased speed is incredibly helpful, and the increased crit damage is nice. Not required, but nice. Open wounds, I almost never use open wounds on the Hydra. Uh, just like Geomancer's A2. I only use Geomancer's A2 or open wounds or Oberos Mystic Smoke if the Hydra actually manages to get a bunch of buffs. Then Geo's A2, Mishal's A3, or Oberos A2 can get rid of all those buffs in one go. That's the only time I use those. So Mishald, all I'm doing on him is Tornado when it's available for the buffs and debuffs, and then his A1, which because of the Tornado, his A1 hits all the hits. Even the Mischief Head, even with its passive that makes your attacks go all over the place, it'll hit all of them. Now, if you don't have Mishald, my number one recommendation would be Yannicka which you get from the, the clan shop. So if you've been playing the game for long enough that you've been buying her fragments from the shop, everyone can get Yannicka with no RNG. Now Yannicka, again, use baffling speed to hit one of the heads that she is not a bad matchup for. Make sure she has 100% crit so that it always crits, and then she'll always be in Veil. 100% of the time she'll be in Veil, and then her main attack keeps Leech on all enemies, and she's hitting all enemies, and so it's safe to run deterrence on her. Now Mishald, which I was uh, the one I actually brought, I took deterrence off him because he ended up fear locking himself way too often. But just to show, I have tried some team variations out with Yannicka, I happen to have two, and just to show that she, she can slap. Now, if you don't have Mashald or Yannicka, the things you wanna look for is AoE damage, and if you can then get it somewhere else on the team, the leech or the increase speed. Those are the really, really big things here. 
That's the reason we're bringing him. Leech, increased speed, and AoE damage. That's that's his role. If you don't uh, have anyone that fits all those things, try to you know fill for one or two of them and get someone else to cover that. So Mashald's stats, I just built him for pure damage. He's actually on my clan boss team, so he's speed tuned, so I don't touch this at all. But he, you know, decent attack, decent crit damage, uh, speed in the low 200s again to be kind of close to everybody else. And these are his masteries. Again, I didn't take deterrence because I don't have Shamail and it kept breaking everything. The last hero I ended up bringing was Vizix, unbelievably, who only became really good on the Hydra team because of they recently made the Head of Decay become provocable. And you could then lock him down with Provoke. The Head of Decay is the one that cleanses all your debuffs, your burns go away, your decreased attack, your decreased defense, it just ruins everything. Especially if you had block buffs on them, he removes them, then they buff up and kill you. So if you're able to just constantly taunt him, constantly provoke him, oh, it makes it so much easier. Now, Vizix is from a login reward, meaning everyone gets her guaranteed eventually. If you're not there yet, stick with me, I'll give you more options in a second. So, single combat. My rule of thumb is anytime the Head of Decay had, you could watch the cooldown of his ability, and he was about to do the AoE cleanse, she uses this. It doesn't matter if she would get feared, because this hits all the heads, but she would use this and provoke that guy. Uh, for that reason, we've got to have some accuracy. Mine has 286, I think 250 plus is fine for hard mode. Sinister Allies does decrease speed. Now, if you don't have Vizix, you can get decreased speed somewhere else. And you, you don't even have to have decreased speed, but the combination of her with decreased speed, the Mashald or somebody else with increased speed, so you slow down the enemy and sped up yourself, you get way more turns than the Hydra does. Especially if you do decreased speed on the stumps when you kill one of the heads and it's decapitated for a time, you get a lot of time to hit it and do bonus damage. Uh, this is huge. Her A1 does, it really doesn't help at all. Uh, it, it affects the target's turn meter. It's disgusting in other content, but the high, you can't uh, reduce the Hydra's turn meter. So this doesn't really matter. It's all about these two things. Now, Artifact, we've got her in Relentless Gear. So with sometimes with Lucky RNG, despite the fact that this is a one turn duration and a three turn cooldown, with speed up on us, slow down on them, and the Relentless, she would sometimes taunt, like she would take three turns before he took his next one three times in a row. Like he would take three turns, she'd take nine, and she would just chain taunt him and he would never get to do the cleanse, and then he was dead. And that's part of what allowed me to get such high damage. Now, the provoke is, in my opinion, the provoke is more important than the, the decreased speed, but if you can get both, fantastic. On Vizix, we needed enough accuracy for her to land her debuffs. Uh, I'd like to, you know, a healthy amount of speed, but not so much that she is leaving everybody else behind. So most of my others were like 200, 220. I got her 245. Um, healthy hit points and defense. She scales with defense. That's a win-win and a bit of crit rate. Masteries, this is what I chose to run for her. Um, a couple of options here I wanted to go over. Uh, one, for Provoke, there is one very, very common option that almost everybody should have. It is actually a rare called Sentinel. Sentinel, when he's booked, has a 75% chance of provoking on his A1. His A1, every time he swings. You could just have this guy with a little bit of luck. You can get it to 80% if you got the mastery uh, to the degree uh, as it by 5%. Um, with a little bit of luck, you can have him just chain provoke the decay head just constantly, just not even worried about the other skills. Um, I mean, th this is certainly nice too, regeneration, but yeah. Uh, Sentinel is a good fill in for just locking down the decay head. Despite the fact that he wouldn't be doing much else, he wouldn't be providing a lot of damage, it allows all your other people to operate unimpeded. Now, the best option for people that might have a hero that I don't, Warchief. Warchief, his provoke lasts three turns with a three turn cooldown. Booked it down to a two turn cooldown. Warchief can permanently lock down the Decay Head, and then he never really does anything else. Uh, it is important to note, the Decay Head's A1, you know, when someone is provoked, they use their A1. The Decay Head's A1 does not hit the target that's provoking them. Uh, I've seen a lot of people reporting it as a bug. That's not a bug. It r hits the target with the lowest health. So if you provoke it, you force it to use its basic attack. His basic attack hits the target with the lowest health. Now, if you've got someone with provoke and you need someone with decreased speed, someone who is often overlooked is uh, Tanix Hateflower, who is from Login Rewards. So everybody gets her eventually. Um, and one of her skills is Spiteful Cut. And she hits an enemy 
and when she hits the enemy, as long as it's a critical, which again, if you have her with a 100% crit rate and she hits someone that does not have bad affinity or poison smoke on them, uh, it will slow the whole team. Even if the other people on the team have the poison smog, this just places the debuff, which means it just skips that. So she can keep decreased speed on the whole team and it does some healing. Uh, she will do some healing with Seeker Bolts when she hits decreased speed targets. So if you need a little bit of patch healing on the team, she can fill in with that. So with that, I've talked your ear off about the who, when, where, and sometimes why of what I'm bringing here, and let's show you it in action. So first turn, if I put some debuffs out, the Head of Decay is going to remove them constantly. That's this second ability right here, removes all debuffs from all heads. If that is lit up, we are using single combat to provoke. So, she is feared because she hit the Torment Head, but the Provoke has been placed. Next up is Duchess, going to put Veil on everybody. All right. Now, she got one extra buff because of the Revive on Death she gets every time she gets Veil. Now, it's Geo's turn. Now, usually, I would not put the Burn on anybody on turn one. However, we've provoked him, so we don't have to worry about that. Now, Mischief and the Fear Head are very annoying. Um, I am going to put Quick Fire Grasp on this guy. Uh, so he is burning and has weakened. And now it is Michal's turn. We are going to put out buffs and debuffs. And then we are stealthed. So we can hit the Torment Head without being feared. Uh, we're gonna do an attack. It's going to hit all four of them. All right. Uh, Doom Priest can put up increased attack, but we already have it. So we're just gonna auto attack. All right. Now, um, Obero, if Mischief Head is alive, we use Ninja Arts on cooldown for more buffs to make ourselves the target of it. And that's it. Okay, so Mischief Head hit her because she had the most buffs. That is completely normal. Then she had the lowest hit points, so the Decay Head hit her. So now we're just going to use uh, Duchess and do some random attacks. Uh, Sinister Allies to slow all of them. And we get hit by that. You notice a lot of the damage bounced back and hit him. Uh, now we're currently stealthed with him, so we are just going to do a normal attack here. He gets feared, but Doom Priest will then remove it. Now we've got some heroes that have lost their increased attack, so I'm going to put increased attack up on everybody. Now Oberos A1, if it hits someone that has four debuffs, it will hit all enemies. Unfortunately, we don't have anybody that has four debuffs right now, so we're just going to hit this one, which actually then makes it four debuffs. Now, if we were lucky and get a Relentless proc here and she gets an extra turn, that would allow her to provoke again, but it does not look like it is going to happen. Um, now, if he uses A1, uh, he'll get feared, but she'll get rid of that. Now, so what I can do right now is actually use Creeping Petrify and remove that Reflect buff so that we don't have to deal with that. Okay, he is going to buff and debuff everyone, just do the AoE attacks. Okay, and just going to hit him. And we are just hoping for a decreased defense. We got it. That's a part of Obero's A1. Uh, now we can taunt to, now if this was close to being cooled down, I would save the taunt. However, now if we taunt, we delay when he does the ward. Uh, the ward is the single target shield he puts on somebody, and then it makes it to where um, if you don't destroy that shield within time, within an amount of time, it will fully heal that head. Okay, so Mischief's alive, which means A3 has priority on Obero. Put up the buffs. Slow everybody down. We only have one option on him, so we're just going to attack. Now, in the AI settings before the match, I made it so Michald never uses his A3. By the way, did you see there? He just fully healed himself by returning, uh, by attacking back and leech. Um, we need to do increased attack because Michald lost it. And we'll notice that this head here actually has the has, uh, four debuffs. So we can actually hit him and it will hit everybody with Obero, which actually puts decreased attack on two more of them. Now, unfortunately, this head is going to get the shield in a minute. Oh. Never mind, she just got an extra turn. We can provoke again. There we go. Just going to A1 with him.
Make sure that Obero targets the target that has four or more debuffs and it will hit all of them. So at this point, um, burn is available again, even though there's still two turns remaining on it. So if at this point, what's going through my head is he is going to shield this on the next turn, but that might be dead on the next turn, which means the shield will go to the next lowest health, which will be this guy. So I don't want to put the burn on him because it will just get removed. So I will put the burn on him and then I don't have to worry about that. All right, we're going to do the slow again. Buffs and debuffs and then hit everybody. He hit us and because of the Geomancer reflect damage, he killed himself. So we don't have to worry about fears for a time. And once again, we have got um, this guy. The mischief head is alive, so we are not going to uh, do her. I would love to do her A1 and hit everybody, but the mischief head would then go haywire and we, we can't have that. And notice the Mischief Head hit Obero again. There's the shield, as we predicted. It went exactly where we thought it would. Uh, everyone has increased attack, so just do a normal hit. Okay, now again, we want her to hit the one that has four or more debuffs. And that also applied decreased defense to two others. That's wonderful. And he is going to do the AoE cleanse next turn, so hopefully we can provoke him before then. I'm gonna put a burn on that guy, take care of it. And there's our provoke. There we go. So no cleanse next turn. Okay, we've already got Geomancer burn on him, uh, which helps, uh, you know, pop this. We're going to break the shield and we're going to get him to cough up that hero, hopefully. Uh, so we can just do this. And again, if she hits someone with four debuffs, it hits everybody. By the way, the stump does count as a debuff. Notice that that hit all four of them. So no big deal. Okay, uh, this guy, the shield broke, so he's stunned. This guy is still provoked and hasn't had a turn yet. Okay, uh, we need increased attack, so we'll actually use it this time. Uh, Mischief Head is stunned, which means I don't have to worry about the her having more buffs than everybody else for a minute. So let's just go ahead and do AoE because AoE will definitely help get uh, him to spit that hero out sooner. And there we go. Let's see if she gets another, oh, extra turn. There we go. We can provoke again. There we go. All right. And we've now stalled this out. So even though this is usually a four turn cooldown, we've gotten it up to six now, basically. All right, the poison head has spawned. So that, we're going to have to watch out for that. Now I would like to get the decay head dead. That would be wonderful. Mischief Head is awake again, so let's get Obro all her buffs back again. Um, this guy is going to lose his burn in just a second. I could put burn on one of the others, but I really want to make sure he dies, so I'm going to refresh it on him. Now, there's that, and decrease speed, everybody. All right, so at this point, because I'm not running block debuffs on my team, uh, they have put up the Poison Cloud. Now, the Poison Cloud makes all hits become weak hits. However, anyone who is burning, the Poison Cloud isn't working on them. Like, the buff's still there. Like, if they remove the burn, then that's that. But that means that we can continue doing damage to the others. So there's that. And we are going to use uh, this skill to remove the Ally Protect from the Decay Head. Now, provoke in one more turn. It would be nice if we got another extra turn, but I don't know if it's going to happen again. We've been really lucky with it for the last two turns. Let's see, we need increase attack. And I am afraid that he is going to cleanse everything, so I'm going to save the burn. Lovely. Okay, so you could say if I were being just a touch more efficient, that uh, I, I you know, could have not saved the burn there. Um, I'm going to save the Provoke. The Provoke is decent damage. It AoE hits everybody. But if this comes back as the Decay Head, I'm going to need that Provoke off cooldown right away. Buff up so Mischief looks at her. And let's put the burn. If I put the burn on him, it's not going to do uh, very much before he dies. So I'm going to put it on this guy. Okay, and slow everyone down. Slow is huge on the stumps, gives you more time to hit them for bonus damage.
Now we're back to Obero, and the Mischief Head is not alive, so I'm just going to take advantage of her AoE attack and AoE decrease defense and keep hitting targets that have four debuffs so that we keep applying that. Now, right now, the only target that does not have a leech, which means um, if Mashal hit any of these three, it would only hit these three. But if I target him, it'll hit him and then hit the leech target. So then we hit all four. Now, at this point, I think we're at the last head and it's the only one that I haven't really talked about. And that is the Head of Wrath. And now the Head of Wrath, of course, has the, the um, effect where it, once he has taken 15 hits, he will do this big angry roar and hit everybody, even whether it's his turn or not. Now, with Head of Wrath, what I usually just keep an eye on it and just make sure that he, if he gets uh, buffs, because he will buff himself, that we get those off ASAP. Um, we have got three heroes here, essentially, that can remove us buffs from a single target. And we just keep an eye for when he starts to get, you know, stuff on him and it gets out of hand and just steal those at the next opportunity. All right, the fear head is back alive, so that is a thing again. Now, unfortunately, uh, Obero just did a deterrence attack right when the fear head spawned and ended up, um, you know, getting her herself with that. Now, there is no one here. There is no mischief head alive, so I can use single combat just for damage reasons. And combined with a leech, that should fully heal her. Close to it. It was close. All right, Obero is alive. I would like to use, um, actually, I guess Mischief Head's not alive, so I don't really need to. So the fear might mess us up. We're okay, all right. All right, Geo's turn. Uh, let's put the burn on him again. We've got burns on three of the four people with a single target burner right now because of reflex gear, decreased speed, and increased speed. All right, you'll notice this guy currently has um, the increased attack. If I use a normal attack here, it will hit all of them and he will enrage and with increased attack, he will hit us really hard. We're gonna use open wounds. And I'm gonna hope, uh, open wounds steals buffs. I'm gonna hope it does the steal before he hits us. It did. Okay, so it hurt, but we're not dead. All right, she is provoked, so she is forced to run in and attack. Uh, Doom Priest turn, everybody has increased attack, so we'll just do a minor attack. Uh, Oboro's turn, hopefully we'll get some very good lifesteal action here. Let's just hit this guy. That hits everybody. Now we can, this guy is reflect damage. We're gonna use the A2 of Geo to get rid of those buffs. And again, Geo, Oboro, and Mashald all have the ability to single target remove buffs, so any of those are fine. Okay. And he has already uh, done his tantrum, so we can hit him without worrying about Enrage again. Now, we got a stump. I don't know what head is going to come back up next, so I'm going to uh, save her Provoke and not consume that, because we don't know if Decay Head is coming. And you notice everyone's health is shooting back up because of that leech. If you don't have leech, that's fine. You'll just need a more dedicated healer than what I've got here. All right, at this point, I think I've shown you every mechanic and how I'm dealing with it. And, you know, I'll meet you at the end and yeah, we'll look over the results. And that's all there is to this comp. I had a little bit of bad RNG around turn 220, so it didn't get quite as high as last time, but still the strategy is extremely viable and with many different heroes. Hope this helps. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button to help us out with the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more content. Until next time.